What's up my friends, welcome back. I always wanted to make a video and show you the basic tools that you will need in any electronics workshop, like for example multimeters, oscilloscopes and so on, but also maybe some logic analyzers, some sensors, etc. But anyway, in this first video I will start with a review on this soldering station. This is the 995D. You see this is my basic soldering iron, and this is the most basic Chinese soldering iron that you could buy for only $9 but I've contacted with Banggood and asked for this soldering station. So in this video I'll make a short review about it and show you how to use it, and also if it's worth investing the money in this soldering station instead of a basic soldering iron like this one. So let's get started! What's up my friends, welcome back! This is the Yihua 995D 2-in-1 soldering station. Let's start with a quick unbox. Well, the cardboard box is quite crappy, and inside there is no protective foam, but there is a lot of foam debris, so I'm guessing that since this is a free sample for me, they sent me an already opened box. But anyway, this is what we have inside. First, the main soldering station case, made out of metal and painted with black paint. The front panel is made out of aluminum, and the buttons out of plastic. The knob and connectors are made out of metal as well, so that's a nice thing. On one side we have the hot air gun support, and on the back the main input with proper fuse and an on and off switch. The case is quite heavy, around 2 kilograms, since it has the transformer inside and all the electronics. Later we will take a look inside and see what we have. It has a width of 10 cm and a height of 13.5. Ok, next we have the soldering iron, with protective plastic on the tip. It is made out of heat resisting plastic and it has a rubber grip. The tip is removable, in case you want to change it with a new one or a different shape. Next is the hot air gun, which gets plugged into the main case just as the soldering iron. We have a bag of different sizes and shapes tips for the hot air gun. Only plug the tip in position and tie the screw, and you are good to go. Ok, finally, we have the soldering iron base with cleaning brass sponges for cleaning the tips, with flux inside as well. Also, a wet blue sponge circle for tip cleaning as well. You also get this tool which I sincerely don't know what it's used for. Maybe to grab the SMD components while soldering, I really don't know. So, that's it, this is all that we have inside of the box. And oh, I almost forgot, we also have the user manual with basic instructions, a guide on how to configure the station, internal structure of the soldering iron, and sizes and shapes of the iron tips. Ok, now let's connect the power cord and the plugs for the iron and the hot air gun. They have different plug shapes, so don't worry, you can't get them wrong. I power the station for the first time and it starts with the standby screen. Press the soldering iron button and enable the iron power, and the fixed temperature will show up. Press the start button to scroll through the menu. Press it once and select the desired temperature using the up and down buttons. Once selected, press it again, and here select the sleep time. This is the time that the station takes to enter into sleep mode if the iron is not used. I'll leave it to 2 minutes. Now press the start button again and change the degrees from Celsius to Fahrenheit if you want. Press again and exit the menu and the screen will show the real temperature of the iron. I've used a thermocouple to test the real value. On the outside the measured value was always below the one on the screen, but I could easily reach over 400 degrees. Now let's power the hot air gun. The ventilator sound will start. You can control the airflow with this knob here. Be careful, the propeller is inside of the air gun, so don't cover this air input. Now select the temperature. It can reach up to 480 degrees, which is hot enough to burn paper just in a few seconds. Now the menu is the same as before. Press the start button again and change the settings using the up and down arrow. One different thing now is this manual or auto setup. If put on automatic, I take the gun out and it starts heating. 
I put it back and the temperature is getting lower. So it should have some sort of sensor inside. Maybe a magnetic sensor that detects when you place it on this support. Now let's test it. First of all, I've tested my old soldering iron and it took a very long time to reach the temperature that I want. Almost 3 minutes for 320 degrees. But this one is faster, with under a minute for 320 degrees, as you can see here on the timer, and speed is something that I always want for my soldering iron. Another good thing is that it gets into sleep mode automatically, and by that protect the iron tip and heating elements, but also reduce the wasted power. Once you take the iron out of the support, it exits the sleep mode and reaches the temperature back very fast. Too bad I don't have another soldering station to compare it with. In just a few seconds you could melt the solder and start soldering. It feels quite good in my hand while working and the tip is the size that I usually use. So soldering my dual PCB works just fine. I would like a thinner wire because since it is very thick it makes movement a bit difficult. Not difficult to work with but a thinner wire would be nice. Ok, so on small pads that get heated quickly, this works great. Now let's test it on a huge copper board like this one. I have a huge ball of solder here, so let's see if it melts it. And yes, in just a few seconds the solder gets melted. Try that with the basing iron and didn't got that good results. Ok, so now if you only work with deep package components, this will work just fine. But since this is a soldering station, let's use the hot air gun as well. This tool is very very useful when working with SMD components, especially when having a lot of pins. Using the soldering iron it is impossible to heat all the pins at once, but using hot air that gets more than easy. You could also thin copper wire very fast. The air comes out at more than 400 degrees. Heat the wire and apply solder. Or just dip the wire into solder paste and then heat it with a gun. Now working with solder paste is more than easy. If you're building your own boards that have a lot of SMD components, just put some paste on each pad, place the components with tweezers and then just heat the solder paste till it melts, or reflow the components, that's how this action is called. With a basic iron you wouldn't be able to do this, and that will spare you a lot of time when creating multiple boards. Another nice thing is that you could remove SMD components from old boards. Just hit the gun and start applying hot air around the component, and once the solder is melted, remove the component. You couldn't do that with the soldering iron, especially for big components and a lot of pins. Now let's open it and see what we have inside. I take out a few screws and the case could now open. All the wires are well insulated, which is very important. We have the main input passing through the fuse and the earth connected to the metal plate. In the middle of the case, we have the transformer, screwed in place on the bottom plate. On first side, on the main board, I can see some marks, which are optocouplers that will separate high AC voltage from the rest of the electronics, and also two triacs that will control the power applied to the heating elements. Here we have a 5V voltage regulator that will definitely supply the main chips on the board. On the sides we can see some through hole capacitors, but the rest of the small components such as capacitors or resistors are SMD. Well guys, that's it. This is my new soldering station. It is very fast, which is probably the thing that I most like of it, it has both soldering iron and hot air gun, nice control and a quite large LCD screen, and a small stand for the iron together with a cleaning brass sponge. It is small compared with others and fits very well on my workshop table. Seems quite reliable, all the components inside look good, it reaches very high temperature and makes my work easy. The price on Banggood is now around 100 euros. The link for it is below in the description. I hope that you've made a general idea of this station and see what you could do with it. Below you have a link to the manual so you could see in detail the specification of this product. Well guys, I hope that you enjoyed this review of the 99 5D soldering station. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. 
And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.